Are you, are you sick of looking at Netflix and you don't know what to watch? So many movies out there, you don't know which ones are good, which ones were bad. You curious about what's out there? I'm Joey Powers. I'm Don Treller. This is The Best Pictures. The ones you don't want to miss. Hit it. Say hello to my little friend! Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Winners go home and prom queen. English, do you it? Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I don't deserve this. Deserves got nothing to do with it. No sequel for you. Hi, and welcome to another edition of The Best Pictures. I'm one of your hosts, Joey Powers. Hey, and I'm Don Trello. Welcome to the show. Don't know why, but I just got kicked off box office, so I went to Amazon Music, so that's a good way to start. And um, uh, <laughs> we're going to talk this week. Um, we're gearing up for, uh, what's it called? Furious X, which is going to be the 10th movie in the Fast and Furious chain. Um, so Joey and I have been going back and... Uh, re-watching some of the movies or watching them for, for the first time, some of the movies that we haven't seen, and uh, getting acquainted with it before we actually go to the movie. So Fast X did open this weekend, uh, number one, of course. I mean, I don't think that was a big surprise. Um, $67.0 million, which is, in America, that's probably what it, I mean, that's probably a little lower end than what it generally gets. Um, but I, sh- I showed you the text. I mean, it's already like 300, like 20-something million. Right. Uh, worldwide it's, it's definitely international driven you know so they could pretty much i think we talked about last week they could pretty much not even release it in america and still and people love it, it. it'll still do well i mean the last one i i think it was the last one or the fate of the furious i showed you made like 240 million dollars in north america and it made 1.2 billion worldwide so it's like yeah. literally the, the north american release and all the money it makes pretty much makes makes its money back and then overseas is where they make a killing so I mean they've been pr- promoting this as the last one, but if it's if it's still going to keep making this kind of money, yeah, why, why, why st- stop? Right? <laughs> why stop? Like seriously, it doesn't matter. Nobody cares about the plot apparently. But like you said, like what was it six and seven? You said get over seven. Yeah, uh, yeah. I was. I wrote down uh, what uh, what they got rated on IMDb, and Fast Five got seven point three. Fast and Furious Six was seven, and Furious Seven was 7.1. So that's pretty good. I mean, when you when you elevate a movie, I mean, we basically talk about, uh, I know we keep talking about this, but on IMDb, anything over a six is watchable. Right. And then it kind of goes up by the grades. I mean, some of the best, the best and highest rated movies are kind of in the low nines. Right. So that gives you kind of a range of what we're talking about. So seven is a pretty, these people really enjoyed that movie. For this type of movie, that's pretty high. Right. You know, because, I mean, I don't know if, uh, I don't know what Gone in 60 Seconds got, but there's no way that got over a seven. Um, I personally, I've seen one through seven minus, uh, I've seen bits and pieces of Tokyo Drift. Um, but the first one's my favorite. I really thought that was the best one of all the ones I've seen. Yeah, I thought it was a pretty good movie. Now, I haven't seen, let's see, I saw seven. I remember when it came out. And I think I thought it was a pretty pretty decent movie at the time i'll have to watch it again but uh these movies are rated above the original one which was 6.8 which i thought was a little surprising so they thought it was they took it up a notch again i find I, that hard to believe to be honest with i you. do too i i don't think they were that good um like i said i just watched fast and furious which was the first one back with vin diesel and paul walker and I liked it a lot more the first time I watched it than I, when I did the second time. Yeah. The second time, I just, I don't know what it was, but I just, it got old fast, I thought. You know, like, it just, I don't know, the plot wasn't great, I didn't think, and I don't know. I mean, it wasn't a bad movie. I'm glad I watched it, but I just. Right, that's kind of how I felt between uh, The Fast and the Furious and then Fast and Furious, which was the second one teaming uh, Vin Diesel the two and Paul leads Walker. Back together, right. And I thought that was I thought that one was weak compared to the first one. 
Um, yeah. I really just yeah. didn't have much of a plot. I felt like they, they developed a plot to tie the action scenes together, basically. Uh, exactly. You know, just to make money. And it, it worked, obviously, because they're still making money today. But the first one was interesting. The, the first, first one, one was good. kind of introduced the characters mm-hmm. and everything. And I did. I thought it was, I thought it was you know, pretty interesting. It's not the greatest movie I've ever seen, but it's, a, it's an entertaining movie. It, and the uh, thing is, the two leads in that, they were not household names when that came out. That's kind of what right. kick-started both of their careers. I think Vin Diesel's biggest role at the time was probably Boiler Room. And Paul Walker had been in Varsity Blues, but he was also in uh, She's All That. But neither one were like, he was not the star of either movie. That's so this true. is really the first movie where they're both the star. And it was a big hit. Right. You know, I'd, so. have a tough time to, I'd have a tough time naming move, other movies that these were in. I mean, I know... Vin Diesel was in what Triple X? Triple X. And, uh, what's the one about the sci-fi? And he's a Midnight? oh yeah, Pitch Black. Pitch Black. Yeah, I haven't seen those. I've seen a few Vin Diesel. I, like he's in this one movie called A Man Apart that he was uh, praised critically for, but it didn't make a lot of money. But it was actually a pretty good movie. Uh, he was a cop, and it came out right around I think the second Triple uh, X that he wasn't in, that Ice Cube was in. I yeah. think it came out came out around the same time as that. It wasn't a bad movie. Um, he was in this movie Knock Around Guys, which was kind of like a kind of like a mobster movie type deal, right. which wasn't bad. Had a good cast, but interesting tidbit: Vin Diesel and I share a birthday, <laughs> not the same year, but the same day. Pretty oh, yeah, yes. pretty close. I think he's a little younger than I am, a few years. Uh, just a quick rundown though: Guardians finished second, um, thirty-two million. It's pretty good, pretty good holdover. It's up to two hundred sixty two hundred sixty-seven, I would say, million dollars. Mario in third, nine point six million five hundred fifty million domestic. Um, number four was the book club, the next chapter with three million for a uh, total cube of thirteen million. In top five, Evil Rise Dead or Evil Dead Rise two point four, with a respectable sixty five million dollars domestically. Now. It's hanging on, yeah. It is. And one uh, movie of note, Hypnotic, Ben, ben Affleck's newest one. Uh, eighth with eight hundred fifteen thousand dollars, already down sixty six percent from last weekend to four point oh five million. Right. So that didn't. I don't know what it is. I like I said, it's five point seven on IMDb. You would think Ben Affleck, Robert Rodriguez together that would draw some people in with the two names. But right. Yeah. Apparently not. <laughs> well, they they also didn't put it on a lot of screens. No, it was like it was like twenty one or twenty two hundred screen. It wasn't a yeah. it wasn't a, a big release. So. Like here, I mean, Guardians is still at forty five hundred. Fast X is at four thousand. So Mario's still at thirty five hundred. So I mean, it wasn't a big wide release. So. Well, like we're we're in a place up here where we live, where uh, we're not going to get. There's a lot of stuff that's kind of peripheral, and it's not going to get released. Yeah. Like you and I had to wait, geez, at least a good month to see Banshees of Inner Sharon. And I think the Fablemans too, right? Probably, yeah. yeah. Fablemans and didn't that's a open Steven here. Spielberg movie. You right. know, we still had to wait. Because I think we Keen finally got it, but they didn't open it, right? I think we had to wait to... Right, I don't think they did th- open yeah, it. Yeah, no. And yeah, the Banshees took a while. And that was like the smallest screen that Springfield has, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and it, it was packed because it only holds like eight people. But I mean, yeah, no, it's just, it's too bad because that, I still think that was maybe not, maybe not better than Top Gun. But other than that, I think that was the best movie of the year. Right. You know, and it's just a shame that not a lot of people got to see it. Well, I think, you know, what's interesting, I guess we're starting to get the hang of this now, is that um, the family that owns the Springfield Cinemas and the Keene Cinemas, the Free Family, right, they um, they get some of those mo- movies. They didn't get Banshees, but they got, like, The Whale. Um, they got the Tom Hanks movie that we saw. Oh, uh, uh, man, A Man Named Otto. Man Named called Otto. Otto, whatever it's called. Yeah. Yep. I mean, they got those, and then they, they kind of run them. That's still playing. They hang on to it. I noticed on, on their website, that's still playing. I forget, was it Keen that it was playing at? Probably, I don't yeah. think they got it that bold, but I'm pretty sure it's still playing. Because we saw Top Gun, I want to say in like September right. of last year, yeah. and it opened Memorial Day weekend, and it was still playing and still doing well. I think it was still in the top ten when it we was. went to see it. You know, it was, just, it was one of those things that was just absolutely crazy, you know? <clears throat> so that's one of the nice things is they'll hang on to them, but they'll they'll – play them at matinees and off times right. and things like that. So you kind of have to you have to reorganize your schedule to see them and everything. But it's nice that they're out there and able to see them. Well, you still want to see the – was it Tenet? Is that what it's called? I did, yeah. They had, they were hanging on to that for a while. Did and you I ever end up getting to see it? Because that's only a matinee, right? Like one day a week. It's like right. a matinee, like a middle of the day. But I noticed the library has it. Oh, they so do? I can take it out of the library. That's good. Because uh, what's the other one that's coming out? Oppenheimer. 
Right. That looks good. We got some good ones coming out this summer. Oh yeah! So coming up, since you brought it up, yeah, we've got uh, this coming weekend. Little Mermaid is the big, uh, yep, the big, big opening. Release, yep. There's a movie called The Machine. I've, does, s- I've seen the previews for that. Who's in that? Uh, it's, oh, the guy from Star Wars. Yeah, uh, not a big name. Luke. Who, who, who's the guy that plays Luke in Star Wars? Oh yeah, yeah, Mark, Mark Hamill. Hamill. Yeah, yeah, Mark Hamill was the big name, the one that I yeah, recognized. Yeah, it looks terrible. It had something to do with. <laughs> This this guy went on a college trip into uh, to Russia, and he must have screwed some mob mobsters or something. So twenty years later, they come back to get him. It sounds terrible too. And it's a <laughs> yeah. And then about my father, which has Robert, Robert De Niro. Robert De Niro. We were talking about that last. That's this coming weekend too. That's that's this, this weekend too. It's supposed to be open. This is according to IMDb. It's supposed to be opening up, and um, I don't know. That's it's kind of like I don't know. Robert De Niro is an old school Italian, and he meets the, his son's fiance's family. Who I don't know. Haven't we seen that plot? Before? I was going to say it sounds very familiar. Like that's been done many times before. I'm right. Sure. So it's kind of like that. Not not super exciting. The next weekend we have uh, Across the Spider Verse. Okay. Yep. Spider Man Across that'll be, the Spider Verse. That'll do well. And it also opens the Boogeyman, which I've seen promoted several times. I've it's seen a, that too. Yeah. The, written by Stephen King. Uh, directed by or something it has something to do with Stranger Things uh-huh. producers directors no, I've seen the like preview that. for it it looks decent yeah it looks like it could could be good uh, the following weekend is uh, Transformers that looks terrible Rise of the Beasts that looks absolutely terrible I will not see another Transformer. I gave up I forget I think after two I gave up on Transformers. Those movies suck so bad. I don't think I've seen any of the Transformers. I saw two movies. in the BF theater, and I regretted it because it was so long. And they, they're in like, they end up like in Egypt or something, or like the Great Pyramids and stuff. I was like, this Michael Bay, I don't care. It's just so stupid. But they make so <laughs> much money that people keep going to see them. That's but, probably going to be the same thing, like overseas. Right, they're going to make a lot of overseas money. May Probably not do as well here. I mean, the first two in Amer- in North America did very well. The first one, I think, opened number one the year it came out. I think it's two thousand six. It was a number two thousand seven, maybe number one movie. Um, the first one wasn't terrible. The second one was pretty bad, and I haven't. I don't even know how many there are. I think Mark Wahlberg got in one of them at some po- at one point. So I mean, it's right. just, uh, yeah, it was a nightmare. And then on the sixteenth, June sixteenth, the Flash. Speaking of Ben Affleck, right. he was the top name in the Flash movie, right. which opens well, the I, same, same weekend as Pixar's Elemental. I think they're putting Ben Affleck's name as the top name because I don't want an, anyone associating Ezra Miller with the Flash right now. Yeah, you know. So, but guess, no, that's seriously. This weekend's really starting the kickoff of the summer blockbusters, right? Because like every weekend coming forward, what's after the Flash? Just, well, what, I'm, I'm kind of excited. The following weekend after that is Asteroid City. Which, right, which, which has a huge cast. Which is Wes Anderson. Yeah, it's got a huge cast. Like, everybody's in that movie. Right. And then leading that leads up to Indiana Jones. Right. And then Mission Impossible. You know, so, I mean, like, every weekend moving forward, there's going to be a one huge blockbuster after another. You know, so this is really... I'm surprised that the, the movie that's opening opposite that is No Hard Feelings with... Uh, uh, Jennifer Lawrence. Jennifer Lawrence. I lied yeah. and said I don't want to see that in the theater. I kind of do after seeing the preview a couple of times. It does look kind of stupid funny. Like, that's something like if BF were to get it, like, in its fourth right. or fifth week, I would go see it. Just because it does look kind of funny. Still questioning why she's in a movie like that, but, you know. I mean, Who I looked, knows? I looked at, like, 2016, she made more money than any female actress in the world. You know? From all the Hunger Games, and she had won the Oscar for Silver Linings Playbook. She was getting... Roles handed to her left after uh, hand that overhand, right. you know, like American Hustle. She was in. She was nominated for an Oscar for that. I'm gonna have to research this. Yeah. I'm gonna have to research this so, and find out why is she fallen from grace? She, because I thought she was a good actress. Well, what, she was in the one with uh, what was it called? Don't look up. Is that what it's called? Right, with Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio, DiCaprio and like a huge cast in that movie. Right. And that was was that David O. Russell? I think it was. It was. It was a famous director, you know. And it's like, and now she's in this. It just looks like a. And it's rated R too. On top of it, you know, so it's, I, I don't think it's like a romantic comedy. I think it's like a raunchy. It's, it just surprises me. Someone that that was that big and that famous is doing something that just seems kind of low rent to me. Right. You know, she did have that movie. I, what was it called? Red Sparrow. I think it was about. She was a Russian spy, and uh, that didn't do very well. But that at least seems like more like seems more like something she would she do. would do than something like this. Right. You know. So it just. 
And it's too bad because she's a, she's a pretty good actress. I mean, I just watched Passengers recently, and I really liked that movie, actually. I still didn't get I didn't get that this week. I ended up from the library, instead of taking Passengers, which was on my mind, mm -hmm. I got a movie called uh, Olive Kittredge with, um, oh, shoot, what's what's her name? Uh, she's married to one of the Coen brothers. Uh, oh, Frances McDormand? Frances McDormand. Anything with her is worth watching. That's what I thought, that, so I took that best one. Best actress of her generation, without question. What's she have three three Oscars for Best Actress? Well, she's got two. She's got she's got Fargo. Maybe you're right. No, I she's think she has three because she got Billboard. She won, right? And then she won Nomadland. Yeah. So she has three lead actress Oscars. That's pretty impressive. That's it, more than Meryl Streep has. Because one of Meryl Streep's is a supporting actress. Right. You know, so that's that's saying something. You know, it's pretty impressive. One of these days they'll go up against each other. I bet they probably already. They have. probably have. I mean, Meryl Streep's been nominated like seventy six times. So I mean, they must have gone up, up against each other once. But no, that's, I mean, Francis McDormand, Fargo, I haven't seen Nomadland. I haven't either. You, you, did you say the library has it? I don't think so. Okay. Because I, I keep looking for that. That's one of the ones that I really want to so see. So this is way off topic of what we've been talking about. What, what, what's, her, what's your favorite performance of her? Is it Fargo or is it Three Billboards? Oh, that's that's tough. That's tough. That's really tough. I really liked her in Fargo. Fargo, yeah. I, I, I know. It's tough. She just nails – that's one of the roles. Nobody else could play that character like that. Right. That accent. It's, it, and it's just – it's it's not a funny movie, but it is funny. You know, it's a serious topic, but it's just – it's funny. And she's – I think she's the main reason it's funny because it's just how she talks and she's pregnant and stuff. And then all of a sudden she's like, oh – I just threw up or I got a bar for what I, you know, it's just like, it's a very serious topic, but they make it like not, not serious at the same time. You know? Well, I was going to ask you off the top of your head too, like, um, cause we were just talking about this this week we, through text and stuff. We were talking about, you know, I like Big Lebowski, another Coen Brothers movie, right. which, which I really enjoyed, but you didn't. And you brought up the other one, Dogma, Dogma which, which I, I, I loved. And I wasn't super exactly, into it, but I said I think it has to do with senses of humor. Yeah, I said if absolutely. we, I say this all the time, if we made a list of the top ten scariest movies, we're going to have a big overlap. But if we talk about the funniest movies, it really has to do with people's senses of humor. Oh yeah. Now, what do you think? What are some of the funniest movies that come to come to? Well, like I personally, I'm not a Mel Brooks fan at all. Like I don't think anything he's done is funny. Like I won't watch anything Mel Brooks. Wow. Does. I don't. I don't think his humor is funny. Um, like dogma, like that. I mean, that's that's drama comedy. I would say it's kind of a mixture of both. But I I found that movie very funny. You know, I just I like the characters in that movie. I like the story in that. I movie. may the go way, back and watch the it way it was too. written. Um, but like for example, you don't like Michael Keaton, right? Like, I just have a hard time. I can't explain. I it. really liked the Dream Team, and I really liked Multiplicity. Those are two of my favorite comedies, and he's the star of both of them. I don't. Have you even seen either one of them? I don't think so. No. The Dream Team's actually got a really good cast. You might actually like it. It's Michael Keaton, Christopher Lloyd, um, Peter Boyle, and Stephen First. They're four, like, mental institute patients that go out in New York City with their doctor for a Yankees game. And the doctor gets attacked and kidnapped or whatever. Oh, right. And so they're roaming the streets of New York City. They're all off their medication and stuff. It's, pre it's pretty funny. It's pretty entertaining. Uh, Doesn't sound politically correct. No, no. I don't know how that would play nowadays, you know. I mean, there's a scene where Peter Boyle just walks in the middle of the church naked, just walking down, acting all crazy and stuff. It's funny, you know, but I don't know. I like that kind of stuff, you know. I mean, like, I really like movies like Liar, Liar, like stuff like that, where you have an actor that just, like, is, like, completely over the top, but he's, like, dominating the whole movie. Like, I don't know. Like, Jim Carrey was that way for a while with, like, that and kind of Dumb and Dumber, I feel. Right. Like, The Mask, I didn't... I don't know. I didn't really care for that. But I remember when I was in high school, um, it was when Jim Carrey was really big. One of my good friends in high school, he was like, you know, I would prefer someone like Robin Williams, his comedy, to Jim Carrey's. Huh. And I was actually the opposite. I never really cared for Robin Williams' comedies. as much. I liked Mrs. Doubtfire. Right. But in general, I like Robin Williams' serious stuff a lot more than I liked his funny oh, stuff. Oh, yeah, I definitely do. Too. Absolutely. I mean, Goodwill Hunting is, to me, the best performance of his career. You know, but he was really great in... Um, the Christopher Nolan one with Al Pacino, uh, Insomnia. Right. You know, he was really good in that. But as far as comedies, I don't know if I really have a style. Um, like, like the Big Lebowski, that's just, that's not mine. Right. I know that. I don't know. I, yeah, mean, I know it's kind of funny to say Coen Brothers because I, I enjoy the Coen Brothers. I think one of the funniest ones that comes to mind is Raising, Raising Arizona. Raising Arizona, which I did like, you know. So I, I just, I don't know. I'm, the, I'm seriously the only person I know that did not like the, the Big Lebowski. 
Yeah. And I just, I, it's not even that I didn't like it. I hated it. I couldn't even wow. finish. The second time I tried watching it, I had to turn it off at about the same exact spot because I just couldn't get through it. I did not like that movie. And it, what's it? It gets like a 7.7 7 or 7.8. Oh, yeah. People love it. It's, it's like a huge cult following. Yeah. And what I've heard is people like it upon like multiple viewings. Like they, you don't like it as much the first time you see it. But when you watch it again and again, and then it, it starts to grow on you. Uh, so I don't know. Maybe maybe you'll have to see it again. Maybe I'll have to see Dogma again someday. I like, off the top of my head, think about funny movies. Um, Martin Scorsese's, one of his, I don't know if he's had more than one comedy, After Hours with Griffin Dunn. I haven't seen that. I always thought that, that movie cracked Griffin Dunn, me. there's a name. Yeah. What was he in? He was in a movie with Madonna. Right. What was that? Uh, is that the Who's one? Who's that girl? Chasing... Maybe it is Who's That Girl. I don't remember, but I, that's what I remember him from, from is a movie with Madonna when Madonna was first becoming big. And I think that was actually that. What's the other one? After Hours? Is that what you said? Right, After Hours. That might be his biggest movie. I don't know. Is that pretty big? I don't know. I don't know if it really was, was big. I just know that I really enjoyed it. I think it's – that type of humor was really funny. I like Coen Brothers. There's a, they did a movie called The Serious Man and uh, – I don't think it's it's a really you know funny ha ha movie, mm-hmm. but it cracks me up. It has its line deliveries. It's it's just some of the jokes that movie I find funny. I like the Wes Anderson movies though. Again, I don't know if they're really funny ha ha either. I think they're amusing and I think a lot of his seem to be more drama comedy though, like like the Royal Tenement Moms for example. I feel like that was kind of a combination of both, don't you think? Right. Yeah. Like I haven't seen that in a long time, but I remember laughing, but at the same time being like this is a serious movie as well. Yeah, they don't really like they don't really have like the gag type of laughs. Like right. Farrelly Brothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Farrelly yes. Brothers can pull off some stuff. Usually they have one good real like gross out yeah. Gag in yeah, their yeah. movies that, that kind of kills yeah, you. Yeah, like in uh, Champions. Remember the injury? The injury. Oh, right. Yeah, oh, that was so gross. <laughs> well, I mean, I was thinking about like something something about Mary where, you know, there's... The, the zipper part, scene? The zipper scene. I was thinking about the other one, but the hair gel scene. That too. What about Dumb and Dumber with the tongue? I haven't seen Dumb and Dumber, believe it or not. Oh, really? I've seen pieces of it. I've seen like the bathroom scene and... I've never sat down and watched that movie. Is that worth it? Is that worth? Shaking? I liked it. I mean, I haven't seen it probably in twenty years, but it was that was like at the peak of Jim Carrey, like maybe being the biggest actor in the world for however long. Because right. it was that. It was uh, obviously Ace Ventura. It was The Mask, and then he did Liar Liar. Not too long after that, he was in Batman Forever. You know, see, so he had a big string of really big movies for a little while. But I, I really liked Dumb and Dumber, and it's weird because that came out the same time Speed came out. And you see Jeff Daniels in Speed, and then Jeff Daniels in Dumb and Dumber, and it's like just two completely, like a 180, complete 180. Right. But there's a scene in that where Jeff Daniels sticks his tongue to the chairlift, and it's like Lord Holly, like pulling his head, and his tongue is just stretching. Like it's just, it's, it's hard to watch. It's gross, you know? It's like, it's God. another gro- gross out scene. Yeah. I'm trying to think of like some other. Well, I was thinking it's not necessarily a style, but I really like, and he doesn't do it anymore, Tom Hanks's comedy. Yeah, I really liked Big. I really liked what was a punchline, right? And, and punchline really wasn't a funny movie, though, was it? Well, it was, it was about it, comedians. It was about comedians, but it was yeah, it was a little more serious, I would say. But um, the one that sticks to my mind is probably my favorite comedy. Tom Hanks is A League of Their Own. I just I watched that probably like two or three. I, that's just some, like one of the go to movies. Whenever I can't find something, I'll find it on one of the things. It's it's always streaming on something, so I don't have to look for the DVD. It's on MLB. They've been advertising it. It was supposed to be playing. Don't doubt it. I mean, it's just it's such a funny movie. He's just he's so great as that right. you know washed up drunk you know has been. Uh, but yeah, it's just, I always thought like uh, Peter Sellers as uh, in the Pink Panther movies. I Actually, st- he's funny in a lot of stuff. I still Pink can't Panther. believe the library doesn't have those. I really want to watch those. I should, we should get it as like a set. That would yeah. be, that would be I looked it up. Fun. It's like 41. 41 bucks for five movies. Wow. Which isn't bad. It's a box set. So I think I might. I wonder if we could find that. That's pretty interesting. Extent, well, I have it on Amazon. That's right. I think who else? What other movies crack me up? You know what's funny is I went back. We talked about comedies in the past. And I went back and watched some of the movies that I thought were funny. Like Mel Brooks. Like Airplane. And they're not as funny as, they, as I remember them right. being when they came out. Maybe because I kind of know what I'm in for, mm-hmm. you know, because you've yeah. seen them before. You know where it's going to go. Right. Uh, but, yeah, I watched Blazing Saddles 
again, and I kind of thought, ah, this isn't as funny. Yeah, I saw that when I was a kid, and I didn't, I didn't like it then. And I tried watching like, History Part, History of the World Part One, and didn't care for that. Yeah. And Robin Hood, uh, Men in Tights, I didn't. It's not good. I just bought that one. I didn't. I didn't like it, but I don't like Mel Brooks, so I mean. Right. So maybe I'll enjoy it. We are uh, running out of time. So that went by pretty quick for not really having much of a topic to talk about. No, so next week we should, maybe we'll, we'll be able to talk about Fast and the Furious. Yeah. Though it might take us time to watch all the rest of the movies. Yeah, cause it's, yeah, it probably will because I still got to watch two and you got to watch four or five. And least, we, think, so. we think Bellows Falls might get it. They're prob- they're probably, you said John Wick is going to be John Wick this is playing this weekend, so they're not opening The Little Mermaid, which is what I thought they were going to do. Right. So and, and Joey and I saw John Wick. We thought it was really, really good. I wanted to talk about it, but we'll talk about that next week. Right. So this has been our episode of The Best Pictures. I'm one of your hosts, Joey Powers. Hey, and I'm Don Trettler. These, These are, are the ones, ones you don't want to miss. miss. You can't fight in here. This is the war room. Here's Johnny. Go ahead. Make my day. Life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it.